Hello everybody, it's Glass Half Dead here, and today we have Kill Team news. I did not expect this coming. I honestly thought the Gen Con preview was all we were going to get. But no, we've got an, an actual Warcom article, and further to that, down the page, once we get there, we have data sheets. That's pretty exciting. I, I genuinely did not expect to get any like news until the release was here. Maybe it's even going to tell us when Chalnath releases. I don't know, except I do because I've already read the article. But I'm going to read it to you now because there's actually quite a lot that gets said here. Half of its rules, half of its fluff, whatever your reason for being here, I'm, good. I'm just going to read the article to you. So before we get to the article, the first thing we have to do, obviously, and I've decided I'm just going to fully embrace this now. Like from now on, this is what we do. Uh, everybody, if you are a subscriber to my channel, this is a subscriber only benefit, so I would like to give you a big circle hello. Yes, that's right, we're back to the geometric hellos, and if you want yourself a nice, gentle geometric pleasantry in the next video, like, subscribe, leave a comment right now. Let's get to the news, okay? Gen Con was huge for the new edition of Kill Team. We saw a fantastic new starter set containing all you need to get going with the game, quickly followed by the first major expansion. Kill Team Chalnath moves the action away from the Octaria sector to the Chalnath Expanse, where elements of the Tau Fifth Sphere expansion are battling the Adeptus Sororitas for the hearts and minds of the people living there. Now, I will just... Uh, slide fluff note. Uh, we don't fully know where the Fifth Sphere expansion actually came out, I believe. And the last thing we heard from them was that they were fighting the Death Guard. I didn't know the Adeptus Sororitas were there. Maybe other people already knew this. Anyway, uh, the new set includes two new kill teams, Tau Pathfinders and Battle System Novitiates, with new models and new equipment, as well as a vast array of plastic scenery and a double-sided game board. There's also a chunky 96-page rulebook containing detailed new rules for both teams and their operatives, as well as plenty of background on the escalating war for the Chalnath Expanse and nine new missions. Uh, I believe that we got nine missions, uh, like narrative missions, in Octarius. Two teams. This seems like, you know, this is this this is something that we can expect. I assume going forwards with Kill Team, this is how their boxes are going to be. Every quarter, every three months, we're going to get the big box, which we can assume is going to be the same price every time. So I think that was one two five for Octavius. I'll talk about the terrain in a moment, but basically, this seems to be the model going forwards. Right, Novitiates. Are they Novitiates? Yes. Take to the field for the first time. Before they become fully-fledged battle sisters, aspirants must prove their piety on the front lines. Known as novitiates, they are usually deployed as kill teams with an experienced sister superior directing their youthful zealotry. Novitiates are completely new to the 41st millennium, and as you've come to expect from kill team releases, this is only the second kill team release, I don't know what they mean by that. <laughs> their kit is incredibly flexible and comes with dozens of options to leave build your team as you see fit, which brings us to a data sheet very exciting first things first so we've got the standard i think right we've got movement three circle apl2 ga1 defense three cool save is four up so that's obviously in line with as we saw in the gen con preview um they don't have their power armor and that's what they're saying here so we can assume that the whole team apart from possibly the leader is going to be a four up save instead of a three up save wound seven which i believe is standard for battle sisters uh, with them being seven wounds but then eight on the sister superior or it could be eight and nine but i think it is seven seven and eight they wield a wide array of sanctioned weaponry from humble auto guns to ancient maces one can even carry a pair of neural whips which are just as handy for driving options forward as they are for lashing your foes there are 10 sisters in total with 12 different types of operative to pick from. Okay, so this is the other thing that seems to be uh, as we can expect from Kill Team going forwards. They give you such an awkward amount. <laughs> it's like, hey, you know how this entire game is based on a roster and not just a team? Well, buy two. Haha. <laughs> anyway, whatever. I mean, you know, it is what it is, I guess. You know, whether that was intentional or whether that was just how it worked out. Who, who actually knows? Anyway, let's look at the Novitiate Exactor. Yeah, so they've got Neural Whips. Uh, this seems to follow the same profile as, as other whips. For example, in Tyranids and Gene Stealer Cults, 
where a whip acts as both a melee and a ranged weapon, except the range is only three inches, so square. But then it's exactly the same. So it's got five attacks, three ups, two, three, uh, lethal five up, stun. Now, when the game first released, <laughs> all those years ago, I actually, I didn't really get stun. Like, when I first saw, when we first saw stun, we all thought, wow, that's super cool, you can remove their action points. But as we're learning the rules a little bit more, stun is seeming less and less useful, because it's like, well, no, actually, you don't remove their, their action points. Um, and so, for example, in my Grey Knights, I don't take a hammer or a stave, because I don't care about stun, or I didn't, except... Since we've seen things now, in melee, stun is really good. I, 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 I am back to liking stun, because on your first crit, you can parry two attacks, which like completely changes the maths. It's really strong. It's like a mini storm shield, essentially. So, stun is good. That's my... If you haven't kept up, you probably still thought that, so you can rethink that. There you go. Uh, but then they have the unique action. Whip into Frenzy, 1 AP. Select one friendly Novitiate optative, excluding a Novitiate superior. Yeah, don't whip your leader. That's not going to go well, obviously. Uh, within blue, square, three, any of those, of and visible to this optative. Add one to that optative's APL in addition. If that optative is, not, is a Novitiate penitent optative, uh, until the end of the optative's next activation, add uh, circle to its movement characteristic. Okay, so let's just have a little read. So you can whip yourself, right? Select one friendly Novitiate Optive. You are friendly to yourself and you can see yourself. You can whip yourself, which might, I mean, you know, that's just kind of like self-flagellation, which is very sister, you know, like that's the kind of thing they, they do. Um, there's no point in giving yourself APL because you have already activated. So rules wise, it wouldn't do anything unless you were on a point. And then really, so that would allow you to hold the point more effectively because you would then be three APL instead of two. So perhaps you can push yourself from contesting the point to uh, controlling it, which is obviously good. And I guess the way that would work thematically is you're just standing around on the point and then, you know, uh, an Imperial Guardsman is like contesting the point and then you start whipping yourself and <laughs> the Guardsman's like, nope, <laughs> I'm out. That's yours, don't you worry. Uh, I don't know, anyway. Okay, so now we have the Tau, I assume. Two Tau Pathfinders have, have a whole bunch of new Gizmos. Gizmos, yep, yeah, thanks. The Tau Pathfinders are already incredibly versatile, but the Earthcast has outfitted them with a ton of new gear. Why am I saying things weird? Gear. Kill Team Chalnath comes with a comprehensive new upgrade sprue for the existing Pathfinder kit. Many new heads, new gadgets, new guns, and even a few new poses. All you need to bring the greater good to the recalcitrant Imperial citizens of the Chalnath Expanse. I can say recalcitrant, but not gear. Right. So this is the Marksman Pathfinder, which they actually... Oh yeah, so this guy here. This is your sniper. This evolved Pathfinder's kill team has access to exciting new toys, including a manual control system for their drone support, a Marksman rail rifle with inertial dampeners and silent dart rounds, and a debonair pair of wraparound shades for every team member. Including drones, there are a massive 16 types of operative you can construct from this kit, while you can bring up to 13 into each mission. Let's have a quick think. You can make 16 types of operative, and you can take 30. So, you know what? They flipped it around on, on me there, didn't they? I, I gave them a little bit of aggro for the whole, you can build 10 sisters and then take 12 operatives. Well, now... There's 16 in the kit, but you can only take 13, so they've beaten me on that one. Fair play. Although I assume that three of them, maybe four, are going to be drones, right? So you've got the recon, you've got the grav inhibitor, and then I believe you have the options for gun, shield, marker light, and pulse accelerator. Ooh, that was off the top of my head. I don't even know the tower that well. How do I know this? The only one you don't get access to is, of course, the turret, which is fire warriors only, and the guardian drone, which again is fire warrior only. And then we know that the recon drone is worth two points, uh, two drone slots. So perhaps you can get, take a maximum of a recon drone and then two of the others. And then boom. Anyway, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Or maybe you can take some standard Pathfinders that would be GA2. So you can eat like double up with uh, two regular guys that can do the GA2 and you can run around with them. Or, or not. I don't know. Just throwing things out there. Right. Let's look at the data. 
uh, movement 3, APL 2, GA 1, defense 3, save 5 up, wound 7. Cool, that's fine. Uh, marksman rail rifle, pick one of the two, a standard or a dart round, interesting. The rail rifle from Compendium just has a single profile, I believe, uh, whereas the iron rifle has the potential to overcharge. In this one, we get options. So the standard, four attacks, three up, four, four damage, AP one, lethal five up, mortal wound two. Okay, that's, that's, that's nice. Mortal wounds two, six damage on the crit, essentially. AP one's good. Lethal five up. That's really nice on a sniper rifle, I'm going to say. Okay, yeah, so now it makes sense as we read the dart round. Dart round, attacks four, three up, three, three, so which because of the mortal wounds becomes three, five, essentially. AP one, silent. So basically, can you safely shoot someone without having to be concealed? Okay, stick with the dart round. Otherwise, you know, engage, go loud, and just wreck somebody with that lethal five up. Basically, the lethal five up means that statistically you should be getting a crit, which means you'll be doing that six damage straight away. Chances are you'll also then do uh, a standard attack. And because you're AP1, they're only getting two defense dice. So you have a pretty easy path to doing 10 damage with a shot there. And they have inertial dampener. Each time this optic performs an overwatch action, for that action shooting attack, do not worsen the ballistic skill characteristic of its marksman rail rifle as a result of performing an overwatch action. Now that's weird. For those of you that don't know, let me just quickly go over why that's weird. Right, so inertial dam uh, overwatch, sorry, an overwatch action is something that you only get to make when you are at the end of uh, your activations, but your opponent is still activating. We've just read here that you can bring 13 models into the mission, potentially. That means there is only one faction, or like, you know, uh, the, the most models that we've seen in the game so far are 14 models, and you're at 13. You're never going to Overwatch unless your plan is to just get absolutely mowed down. So deliberately, so that you can start overwatching with like this, and then that's not worth that. Uh, so interesting. Here's what I think. There's going to be a tactic, a ploy, uh, a strategic ploy, I assume, that's my guess, which is going to say, you know, uh, once with, with one model, you can overwatch this turn uh, at any point. You know, that kind of thing. Do note that when you overwatch, you are tied to the order that you've already put down. And off the top of my head, I believe that you can still only overwatch if you have an engage order. Yes, that's correct. So if you're concealed using that dart round with the silent, you wouldn't be able to overwatch. So you'd have to go engage, make your marksman shot. Then perhaps, you know, like again, I'm just making this up as possibilities. Then perhaps you use your ploy overwatch to get a double shot, but then you're engaged. I'm just making rules up. Oh, maybe they have this. Let's let's theory craft the entire list, assuming that they do. Good job, Andy. All right. Uh, daring and dangerous missions are afoot. Your operatives will have their work cut out for them in the Chownath Expanse, with nine new missions arriving in the Shadow Operations Chownath Mission Pack. So Shadow Operations uh, from Octarius and from the Core Book are their their name for narrative missions. So. No new core um, competitive missions or match play missions, but that's fine. Cool. You'll be taking over missile launch systems, destabilizing the foundations of critical buildings and smuggling high value targets through enemy lines. Now, I do just want to quickly shout out there because as soon as I read missile launch systems, I instantly thought, you know what that could be? If you have yourself the gun tied rig from the Tau terrain, that'd be really cool. Now, they're not giving you the Tau terrain in this box. So that's just, but you know, it's narrative, so just make it up. Um, this is pretty cool artwork. I just want to shout this out as well. Right, so you've got your your auto guns on the sisters here. You've got a dead Tau, two dead Tau. I mean, Tau die. Yeah, that's, yeah, that makes sense. But then you've got one who's captured a sister in melee, apparently. So pretty unbelievable at this point, but let's go with it. It's fantasy. Uh, and is trying to hold off people in a, in a kind of hostage negotiation scenario. Although in typical 40k style, somebody is firing at them. Oh no, that's coming from the tower, isn't it? That's like a speed, a speed line. Okay. Chownath is basically on fire. The Chownath expansion is... 
The Chownath Expanse is situated on the wrong side of the Great Rift, deep within the darkened reaches of Imperium Nihilus. In the power vacuum left by the loss of the Emperor's Light, the Tau Empire- sorry, <clears throat> allow me to add some gravitas. In the power vacuum left by the loss of the Emperor's Light, the Tau Empire's Fifth Sphere expansion is claiming world after world, with Commander Shadow Sun at their head. In response, the Adeptus Sororitas declared a war of faith to liberate the Expanse. All the while, Gene Sealer cults, roving orc warbands, and heretical cults sow mayhem throughout the civilized worlds. It is safe to say that almost every faction has a stake somewhere in the Chalnath Empire. Uh, now we get to the terrain, which, let's see if they say what I'm thinking. See many wonderful works of imperial architecture in ruins. With the action focusing on Imperial worlds in the Vedic system in particular, your kill teams will be duking it out across ruined human cities and installations with all the usual trappings. Aquilas, cathedral windows, and barely a floor left intact, although just enough to act as a vantage point. It's a great set of terrain and it's totally modular. With five ruined walls and two larger ruins offering deadly vantage points for snipers and plenty of doors and hatches for sneaky operatives to get the jump on their foes, it's the perfect stage for a bloody bout of covert operations. I... okay, so I... this is the Sector Imperialis terrain. Let's see if we... enhance. Enhance. This is the Sector Imperialis terrain. They're not using that word. And I don't know why. So let me tell you why, though, okay? <laughs> so, the Sector Imperialis Terrain, for you, those of you that don't know, was first released in the first Kill Team Starter Box. It was a great bit of terrain. Everybody liked it. There was not a bad word about that terrain set. It was also the launch of the Sector Imperialis Terrain range, which then, a little bit over a year ago, was completely silently removed from the GW Web Store. No idea why. I mean, they didn't announce it, they didn't say, hey, this is your last chance to pick up this awesome terrain of Sector Imperialis. They just took it away, and they replaced it with Vertigus terrain. They still kept the Mechanicus terrain. At first, I had thought, maybe GW's decided the 5-inch terrain isn't the way to go. But they kept the Mechanicus terrain, which is that 5-inch. And now they're bringing back Imperialis terrain. And I don't know why. I'm, I'm, I, yeah... I'm just super confused. There you go. But they're not calling it Imperialis Terrain. But they haven't changed anything. So what I'm going to assume from this is that this is going to be a one-off set. They're not going to bring out the rest of the Imperialis Terrain. It's just, this is it. This is Chownath. This is your, your, your board. That's what you get. Which is fine, I guess. It's just a touch confusing, maybe. Although, let's look at this terrain a smidge, a smidge more. So obviously the way in Kill Team that you kind of uh, denote what your terrain is, you just kind of pick a piece and say, right, this is light, this is heavy. This is a vantage point, this isn't, so you can't stand on it, right? This is going to be interesting. So I haven't looked at my Imperialist terrain. I assume that some of you guys have already. But from the looks of it, because the general rule to follow is that if a piece of terrain goes above your your head, it should probably be heavy. And if it's if it's a wall as opposed to like a rickety fence or a little bit of sheet metal, then it should probably be heavy instead of light. That's you know, and you can decide. And a, a piece of terrain, if we zoom in even further here, let's oh god. Yeah, so for example, this, like you could say the columns here are heavy, but if you're at the window pieces, it's light. Now that's going to get a little bit finickety. So if we look uh, here, for example, this, oh, the, the bit that's behind my head, genius. If we look at this bit right here, what I would probably do is say between these two columns, and including the columns, you're heavy, but this bit here is light. So, you know, it's entirely possible that there's a part of this little wall uh, that does go above your head, but eh, it doesn't matter. Just say it's all light. Um, I'd probably do a similar thing with this piece as well. I'd say between these two columns, heavy, here light. But one thing I will say for GW, uh, at least what they did in the Octarius book, is they just pictured all of these pieces that you get in the book and said, this is light, this is heavy. 
and there are multiple pieces where they have light and heavy combined on the same piece so i assume they're just going to tell us that for this five inch let's talk about the five inch very quickly as well five inch sucks for gaming right three inches really good you could of course go up to four inches because um the way you climb it's the same but how how are we going up five inch terrain for every for every faction that's a move and a dash right because the way climb works is you round up this is five so that means you're moving three circle to get up there but then you you still need to um do your horizontal movement so you have to move and then dash to clear that edge my assumption is they have to give us a keyword right uh or not maybe not a keyword but like um, if you are next to a ladder or a particular, for example, let's say here, okay, let's say they're going to say, if you're next to this column, that can't be, uh, that just, that's just climbed. But if you're next to the window, then because the window almost, let's be honest, looks a little bit like it's, it's climbable and almost, you know, there's enough handholds there. If you're next to a window, then it only costs one circle to move. Or maybe they, they swap it so that it's the same as the drop. Uh, if you're next to a window, minus uh, round down your movement. So then five would still be two to climb, right? Uh, two circle. I don't know, but that is interesting. Okay, cool. Right, we're done. So what, what to say? What to say? Let's go park me on this Marksman Pathfinder because I'm pretty hyped for... Uh, for for these here and I'm going to face this way Marksman Pathfinder I'm I'm interested I'm interested Tau okay so I kind of said this in the Gen Con reveals right Tau are in my mind the only faction that genuinely in 40k are actually spec ops like fluff wise they would have a spec ops team and this is them and yeah I'm pretty excited. I've, I've got to be honest. So I'm really looking forward. I was originally, um, as I said before, the Gen Con reveal, right? I was just starting to think about getting some Tau. Now <laughs> I'm waiting <laughs> because I want these Tau, right? Obviously, I'm not going to paint up a Pathfinder set when I can paint up this Pathfinder set. Anyway, I'm really excited. Sisters, I'm equally excited for Sisters, actually. Uh, I've kind of talked myself into being more excited about Tau, but... Uh, I think that my the sisters here are going to look really cool once I've gone ahead and painted them in, in my scheme. But I'm genuinely interested. Maybe I'll do a poll, but until I've put that on my community tab, which are you more excited about? Sisters or town? I think in that poll, it's going to massively landslide to be like 80% of people are going to be more interested in town. But I'm super interested to see how that comes out. I'm going to be honest with you guys, that's the end of the video um, I was going to do today. I was actually going to do my my big, uh, I, I was either going to do my Warhammer World coverage, because I just obviously did that on Saturday, or I was going to do my, so Custodes are broken, what do we do? Uh, you know, or Custodes are broken, GW, how could you do this to us? You know, depending on how salty I was feeling that day, today. But then this came out, so uh, yeah. So that'll be tomorrow instead, I guess. Uh, please come back for that. Uh, but if you've made it to the end of the video, everybody, I would like to just uh, thank you, and I will thank you with a big square hello. Wow. What a geometric hello. Truly astonishing. I hope you found it very wholesome. Where else does, a, does the creator of this content fill you with such hope and positivity than with geometry, right? What am I doing? I, I don't even know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, guys, I have a patron. That's something I meant to say. Also, <laughs> did you know? Uh, oh, on the patron, uh, you get access to a, a podcast I'm doing called Vantage Point, uh, where I've just put up the fourth episode. That's coming up. Uh, that's live on my Twitch right now, but it's coming up on uh, on my patron on YouTube for to be watched forever more, uh, hopefully later today. Uh, I also give out, if you're in the top tier, a, a Glass Half Dead themed data card template for you to put on your own models if you want. I also put up early scripts. 
So for example, you know, something that's really confusing a lot of people, I think, and that people don't like, they're a bit scared of, so they're shying away from, what are they called? Tac Ops. Guys, you've already seen my script for that video, where I just break down all the Tac Ops and explain it. And then likewise on the Tac Ops front, uh, occasionally I'm going to do like a little breakdown of my tournaments. So at Bad Moon Cafe, I actually wrote up like a, a little, a little, a little piece, if you will, um, about how you can interpret the way people chose Tac Ops in their first tournament. And if there's any kind of data we can glean from that, if there's a particularly powerful or weak uh, Tac Ops uh, secondaries for you there. Uh, that's one of my patron. Um, is there anything else? Oh, yeah. So one other thing. Uh, in the coming months, I'm going to rebrand my channel. I'm not going to change the name. I'm staying Glass Half Dead because people call me Glass. I think the Half Dead's a bit weird. But basically, the colour scheme's going to change. And uh, there you go. I'm finally going to accept that I am just a Warhammer channel. and primarily a Kill Team channel. And uh, go with that a little bit. Because right now, I'm just weird. I don't know. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Watching the end of the video genuinely helps. Did you know you can share videos? Who clicks that? That's bizarre. Like, what even happens when you click share on a video? I don't know. How about you find out and tell me what happens when you share it? Thank you very much, everybody. This has been Glass Half Dead. I hope you've had a good day. Continue to have a good day. Goodbye.